Hi there, my name is Peter Conover. Uh, I live in Oak Park, Illinois, and this is an Aston Martin DB Mark III from 1957. I found the car in 2005. It was at a broker's in uh, Youngstown, Ohio. Complete basket case. It didn't have an interior in it. it, had lots of holes in it. Luckily, it's an aluminum body, so rust isn't so much an issue, although corrosion can be. There's not that many of these cars out there, and because of that, I bought it on the spot. I had already joined the Aston Martin Club and, and sort of set up a network of people who knew about these cars and uh, sources for parts, things like that. Uh, I also had a relationship with uh, a specialist up in Rockton, Illinois, Mark Baker at Sport and Specialty, and we had already arranged that when I bought this Aston, he was going to help me with the restoration. He was going to do all the things on it that I couldn't do, which is a lot. He looked at the car shortly after I bought it and basically asked me to uh, take as much of it apart as I could, which is some of the things that I can do by myself. And we basically, you know, once we took it apart, we saw exactly what we had. And what we did have was uh, a frame in very good condition, uh, a body in very poor condition, virtually no interior, but we had all the mechanical components that we needed. Well, I never thought that it would take five and a half years and cost as much, but the, the body really is, is, is very special. Uh, I mean, it has lines that you won't see on any modern car anymore. Um, it seemed like originally it wasn't in such bad shape, but to get it to actually fit correctly and to get all the shut lines perfect, it took a lot of work by the, by the body shop to do that. Um, that wasn't something that I was specifically involved with. And you know, week after week, month after month, I would go up to the shop and look at the see the project, the progress. And it seemed like it was making a lot of progress, but I still couldn't understand why it was taking so long. But to get it right, it really does take a long time. It's a straight six engine. It has a double overhead cam. It looks a lot like uh, the engines that are in the Jags from the same time, but internally it's quite a bit different. It has a, uh, an old kind of antiquated aircraft system inside the, uh, the, the block where the crankshaft is enclosed in what they call cheeses. Uh, and what that was done was so that uh, in the days when during the Second World War, when they were doing maintenance on the aircraft engines, they could take the, the crank out in the field, put in new uh, bearings without having to take the whole thing apart. It's pretty unusual to find that in a car engine, but it's what Aston was doing at the time in the 50s. Uh, in their subsequent engine after that, they completely got rid of that. The DB in uh, DB Mark III stands for David Brown, who bought the company in the 1950s uh, after the World after Second World War. Uh, and um, David Brown had made his fortune as a tractor manufacturer. So those of us with British cars often like to call our transmissions tractor transmissions or tractor engines. And in this case, it really did have a lineage to David Brown. The original transmissions really weren't the best. And later on, they st started replacing them with uh, manufacturers, other, other manufacturers' transmissions. Well, the DB Mark III, as I said, was introduced in 1957. And in many ways, it has a direct connection to the cars that preceded it. With the DB Mark III, they made a big change in the grill. And they took the grill that was basically the grill that they had used in the DB3 race car uh, that Aston was campaigning at the time, and they put it on their road car. And the really interesting thing for me is that that first appeared in 1957, and if you go to a Aston Martin dealership today, you will see the same grill on all modern Astons. When Ian Fleming wrote the novel of Goldfinger, uh, this was the first Aston that he put the character James Bond in, and it was in this specific car. Uh, he got the nomenclature a little bit wrong. He called it the DB3, uh, with DB Roman numeral 3, and it's actually called DB Mark 3, but uh, we know this is the car that he was driving. By the time that they filmed Goldfinger with Sean Connery a few years later, Aston gave them what was then the current car, which is the DB5, and that has become the legendary Bond car. To call this a sports car is probably a little bit uh, of an exaggeration. Um, even in the 50s, they considered these cars to be more uh, GTs, grand touring cars. Um, it handles fine. Um, it accelerates well, but really where it gets uh, its highest marks is when it's on the road. It can certainly cruise down a freeway uh, and keep the pace with any other car that's, that it'll come across. But when you're on a backcountry road with some hills and some turns, that's where it really feels that you've got a connection to the car, you've got a connection to the road. Uh, it's responding to you, you're responding to it. It's kind of a, a synchronicity that you don't get from a modern car, even though any modern car will outperform this car.